most people are saying when they had the low interest rates, it was killing our market. Mm -hmm. You know, the Bank of Canada didn't do anything for the longest period of time. So the Bank of Canada are liars. I'll put it out there. I think the Bank of Canada are liars. They told us when I got my mortgage, oh, we can't increase interest rates more than 1%. And what do they do? They increase it 4% or four and a quarter that year. What happened to your 1%? So I factored in 2% thinking I was smart. Well, Nobody would have anticipated they would have increased interest rates of an unprecedented amount. Mm -hmm. I just think the market is now finally figuring things out. Mm -hmm. A little bit of easing will help most Canadians. Mm -hmm. I think most Canadians are struggling right now to even make grocery bills, yeah, let alone worry more, more, more about buying another house. Welcome back for a brand new week of the DC Talks podcast with David Cinelli. Woo-woo. To my left <laughs> is the main man, David Cinelli. I'll give you a fist bump, but yo. Why are you so far away this time? That's I don't know. episode 69. 16. I thought, you know, we'd be a little we'll closer. We'll be closer. <laughs> <laughs> We're now respecting the number, Isaac, man. what are you doing to us, man? Like, you can't even see my DC logo from this. I, if you guys listen to pot, uh, the audio, uh, Owen and I are just a little bit further apart. A little bit farther I, I miss apart. you, buddy. I miss you too, man. <laughs> yo, it's, uh, you know, by the time, this will be coming out next week but it was just your birthday yesterday man yeah man. happy birthday thanks buddy big 46 46 how yeah. you feeling fantastic yeah yeah you know 45 was jordan's second number you know yeah because they wouldn't let him come back because like, he was retired at 23 and then yeah 45 but 45, that didn't last man. very long oh nah, man 45 just was not a good look man no he's yeah. at 23 I, and screw you guys if you think lebron's the best a basketball player of all time go screw yourself yeah well, jordan number one never lost never went to a game seven in in, in the nba finals mm -hmm. never lost a fucking championship mm -hmm. screw lebron and his little fucking pansy ass i well, hate that there's kid. been there's been a sorry lot. i don't hate him i don't hate anybody i just don't, i'm not a lebron fan i've said over if you watch my facebook there's so many stats saying how good jordan is compared to lebron yeah, Cry yeah. they were saying they're done with the 90s did you see that trend on twitter and uh tiktok no they're done with 90s basketball no. Yeah, they were saying like they were discrediting the nineties. They didn't they were saying they were playing against uh, uh unathletic people, et cetera, wow. et cetera. God. Yeah. yeah. Any excuse to make that the LeBron better. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nice mm -hmm. try. Yeah, man. I think Jordan could whip his ass today. Yeah. Right? Yeah, like, absolutely. Man like man like Jordan. What are you laughing at? Did Isaac, you don't believe us? <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> but um, Isaac thinks we're going too far if you get here. All right. All yes. Right. By your DC list. With a cigar in his mouth. With a cigar. Yeah, in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> With a Jesus sandals on, you know, the barbecue you go, ones. Boy. Hey, you see his mother dunking? You see that bad before we get into it? Did you see this that bad, the, like oh the 90s God. commercial? But it's his, yeah. His mom. So some people watch, and there's this old uh, clip where Jordan's mom is like pretending to shoot, and then they have a clip or like a bad, bad, uh, a bad clip and it's, it's her where it's a guy wearing a wig dunking and, and, and it's dunk supposed it. to be his mom and then i'm trying to do anything to make him look like his mom he's just like bro that's a dude dunking the ball but that was part of it that's why it was hilarious i know right and it was 90 so it was even like the filming was terrible terrible so it's, it's the terrible best. stuff man before we hop into the the main topic of the of the episode one more question sure what are you most looking forward to now as you turn another leaf in your life 46 because it's a mm. blessing to see another year of life right yeah. and i know you're someone who's very grateful um what are some of the things you're grateful for in the 45 years and uh what are you looking forward to now to add on to very good question yeah. uh, so i think i think we talked about this before since what happened with my brain issue mm -hmm. every day i wake up i thank god every day that i'm alive yeah so the last two years even the last more recent the last year or so first thing i do when i wake up i thank god it's giving me a different outlook on life and it changes that so i'm very mm -hmm. grateful that god has saved me yeah uh physically and, and jesus as well has saved mm -hmm. me as spiritually as well mm -hmm. so i think every day that we walk in in the life in the light of god mm -hmm. helps us i know people some people don't understand why i'm so religious i actually had somebody reach out to me and say which we were, we'll talk about off camera and like how do you believe in god and i'm like how do you not look what's happened in my life yeah look at the miracles so I'm grateful for all the failures I've had in my life because mm -hmm. there's been a lot in the 45 years. Yeah. And I'm grateful that they didn't crumble me. They made me who I am. And what I'm looking forward to in the, in the 46 and beyond is getting healthier and healthier. Mm -hmm. I just uh, I just had a, a heart scan to make sure that the heart was good. Um, you know, I'm a little bit, a little bit still worried about that kind of stuff because our family has a history of heart disease. Mm -hmm. And we do, I do have plaque in my, my, in, in my arteries. And that was kind of an eye opener. Um, and it literally has nothing to do with diet or exercise. And because shit, I, I play hockey against guys who are 20 years younger than me, and I'm mm -hmm. like, I'm never, they're up more of a breath than I am. I'm still mm -hmm. doing that. So it's 
sometimes it's genetics. Mm-hmm. So the one thing I would say to our followers to get checked, honestly, get checked, whether it's your prostate, because everyone talks about prostate health, but get your heart checked, push for it. Mm-hmm. If you have a history of heart disease, my cousin was telling me, who's he just 65, I think he is. And he was saying to his doctors like, well, you're already 65, what do you care? Like, you know, why would you want to get your heart checked now? You're just going to, you know, take money from other people that actually need their hearts. Like something along those lines, like why would you waste your mo- the, mm-hmm. the taxpayer's money by going to scan and get heart, your heart scan where people actually need the heart scan that need it, you're taking it from them. That's, that's the a wrong sh- method. That's a short-sighted that's, way of that's looking That's so short-sighted. Like, yeah. listen, like get checked, mm-hmm. be your own proponent. I've said this before about my brain, now I'm saying about my heart too. Like. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm doing everything I can to stay in this world longer for my kids, for my family, to help people. That's my the goal is this year to help more people. Yeah. And I've already started that. I don't want to tell, I don't want to pat myself on the shoulder. I don't want people to know how many people I help. But people behind the scenes that I'm talking to know who I am. Oh, yeah. that I'm talking to them. Yeah. And um lastly on top of that, like one of the things as I was wishing you happy birthday was telling you that, you know, one of the gifts that you have, VC, is like you always let your light shine and you are not scared to let that shine that light shine on other people Mm -hmm. and never feel like you have to dim that light because there's a reason you have that and there's a reason you've been chosen to give people to benefit from that light and you know some people might like oh like why is he so giving why do you always give and everything because that's a gift from god man Mm -hmm. and uh we can all feel it just not even from the things you material uh, from a material level but just from a spiritual level there's something about you that you've been given that is being bestowed on everyone that comes across from you so i just want to give you that well, and as a well sometimes you don't always know that yeah right? yeah just, I, I don't i don't do it for the mm-hmm. i don't do it for the accolades i don't do that for people the patting on the back mm-hmm. it's nice when you hear it's well it's actually to be honest with you, it's humbling you know because mm-hmm. i i don't always don't know to take um compliments, compliments yeah. right so to me it's i don't do it for that yeah you know it's like it's you do it just because you're you yeah i think so yeah yeah Yeah. Yeah, well i remember when my dad passed away um at his funeral the one thing that still stuck to me during the wake was the amount of people that came up to me and said you have no idea how much your dad is a legend and it was like yeah and i didn't know Mm -hmm. i didn't know that he was helping all these people i didn't know that he was giving advice i didn't know that he was helping with finance i had no idea Mm -hmm. and that was like you know that taught me a lot mm-hmm. you know and his death taught me a lot yeah yeah well so. you're carrying the torch very well man from Thanks, buddy. How, how long i've known you um in other news though man right? <laughs> now we're gonna get into it let's you're get into get me it teary-eyed and now you're gonna get me fired yeah, up fired up you know a mixture of emotions if you don't know me by now I guess i i think you're you fire the topic what we're talking about yes now. yes man so the Bank of Canada, recently an article on Toronto Star just came out and said that uh, the Bank of Canada Canada has little to no choice but to cut interest rates by June. Um, I read the article. You read the article. Yeah, I did a video on it. Did a video on it. I missed the video, but I saw like snippets of it. Yeah. yeah right? it, was just, it was just a quick Instagram video, which mm-hmm. I did the green screen behind mm-hmm. it. And again, I just kind of gave my ideas and I had some interesting comments off camera for like off the and. People always just want to put their two yeah. cents in there. But to uh, to summarize. And again, guys, when I do something like this, mm-hmm. this is not me saying my opinion. I'm like, I don't control the rates. I don't control what this author says. I don't mm-hmm. actually agree with this author at all. Mm-hmm. So according to the article, he's yeah, saying, he yeah, let's let's get into it a little bit. Uh, this article is saying, well, they're, the bank account has like, basically, based on these numbers, they're going to have to cut rates in mm-hmm. June. Mm-hmm. I disagree. Not to say it, but I listen for for personal reasons. I would love the Bank of Canada to start cutting rates. Like my mortgage is crazy, crazy right now. Yeah. My lines of credit with all my rent investment properties. I'm running the red in some of them mm-hmm. because of the interest rate increases. But so you're feeling is. the squeeze. Oh, of course, I'm feeling squeeze. Yeah, but that doesn't mean it clouds my judgment thinking that this is going to happen in June. We had uh, we had an economic uh, update from uh, Urban Nation came to the mm-hmm. so our our firm our. Royal the page signature hires Urban Nation, and they do a specific economic analysis on a monthly basis for us, based just on real estate, how things mm-hmm. were looking. And he came, he talked to our leaders meeting, which is all of us, you know, the the award winners. We have this meeting, and he to kind of talked to us. He agrees. He doesn't think it's going to happen in June. Mm-hmm. But what he did say was, "Well, look for the numbers to come out on my birthday," and he goes, "And they're going to be lower than expected." Well, he was wrong. 
You know, they came in at 2.9 yesterday. Mm-hmm. They should have been, last month was 2.8%, I believe. Mm-hmm. Well, 2.9 says things are trending up. But of course, gas prices are up. Mm-hmm. That's a big driver. But we were saying like, even the him, he thought, oh, 100% July, they're going to cut rates. No, yeah, I, I, I don't think so. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think that the Bank of Canada gives a shit about you. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't care that they think a lot of people are, are struggling right now. I just they're looking at their numbers. One of the byproducts of having high interest rates is that what increases the inflation rate is housing costs, mm-hmm. which includes mortgage high mortgage costs directly related to fucking high interest rates Mm -hmm. and high rents. They care more about the high rents. Again, directly related to high interest rates. So if they were to cut interest rates, that would help with their inflation, but they won't do that, right? And I get it, don't get me wrong. If they cut interest rates, the fear is that everyone's gonna start coming to the market and just Mm -hmm. coming, oh my God, they're coming in. I, I, again, I don't think that's gonna happen. Mm like as much as people think it's like last year we had two interest rate increases we had one in june and one in july that crippled a lot of people and the market dropped that's why we had the slowest amount of sorry the least amount of sales since 2000 was last year we were trending to have roughly fairly good market but those two interest rate increases which i think were unnecessary Mm -hmm. crippled a lot of people Mm -hmm. So easing up core of a point, we're just going to put us a little bit back to where we were the, like last year, which was a normal market. Mm-hmm. If they got 50 basis points, I think we'll be back to a regular market. There may be more buyers in the market, but I don't think we're going to be anywhere close to where we were in mm-hmm. 2022. Yeah. Like we're still at, a, we're still at an overnight rate. We're at 5% right now. We're going to cut it to 4.5%. So the idea is that, so that would help ease interest rates. Mm-hmm. Sorry, inflation rates. But I just don't agree with this, right? I don't agree that they have to cut the market in June. So, so this uh, this author's um, comments is that since the inflation just dropped just a little bit uh, because of the consumer price index, that means that the Bank of Canada has to respond by no, cutting the don't. interest rates. No, they don't. And the other thing is the Bank of Canada is slow to act now. Yeah. They were slow to act to drop the increase the interest mm-hmm. rates and they fucking went crazy. Like, I, I just don't understand why they did that. Mm-hmm. But they were slow. Like, we were telling, like, as even that we, like, but I think the, most people are saying when they had the low interest rates, it was killing our market. Mm-hmm. You know, the Bank of Canada didn't do anything for the longest period of time. Mm-hmm. Then all of a sudden they tell us, so the Bank of Canada are liars. I'll put it out there. I think the Bank of Canada are liars. They told us when I got my mortgage, oh, we can't increase interest rates more than 1%. And what do they do? They increase it 4% or 4 and a quarter that year. What happened to your 1%? So I factored in 2% thinking I was smart. Well, nobody would have anticipated they would have increased interest rates to four. for a, an unprecedented amount. Mm-hmm. And I think they, I would say they want people to get bankrupt, but they're they're doing their fair share. They're doing yeah. their, their job trying to push people mm-hmm. along. Um, and, the, and don't even talk to me about the federal government with their last announcement. We'll get into that in a second, but I don't want to get too fired up too quickly. A, a, NBC, I'm curious, right? So for them to increase the interest rates, let's say, everything is equal, like on a regular, okay, where the Bank of Canada, we're doing things ethically and we want to increase the interest rates. How long does that typically take for them to come to a decision to say, you know what, based on X, Y, Z factors, this is what we believe. Well, it's been, it's been working for a while. So it's almost Mm -hmm. been a year. I think they've been looking at these numbers, decrease, Mm -hmm. decrease, decrease. But when we're talking, when Urban Nation, so when the Urban Nation report came out, they were saying to us, the bank can still wants to wait just a little bit longer. They're taking their time. So there's no set schedule, I think. Mm-hmm. Owen, I don't think they just look and they say, well, we have to wait this amount of time. But we know now they're taking their time, mm-hmm. even though all the numbers are even quarter. So I do agree with this guy that the numbers are showing they should cut rates. Mm-hmm. But again, one of the fear is that, you know, that if they cut the rates too quickly, that a that our Canadian dollar would get decreased. He doesn't talk about the Canadian the dollar. The depreciation of the Canadian yeah. dollar. Yeah. He doesn't talk about that. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you yeah. about that. Too. And the second thing was, again, like, will that increase? The fear is that, again, the, the housing prices will go up and then affordability will be decreased. And then mm-hmm. we're back and, we think cut, and then and then they have to reverse their, their cut. Mm-hmm. But I don't, Again, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen to the way that some people are anticipating. Yeah. Right. I just, yeah. I just think the market is now finally figuring things out. Mm-hmm. A little bit of easing will help most Canadians. Mm-hmm. I think most Canadians are struggling right now to even make grocery bills. Yeah. It's, let alone more worried about buying another house. On that grocery stuff, I actually had a TikTok go viral 
I, I came from the grocery. I went to Loblaws and I spent like, I think 65 bucks and it was like four or five items. Right. And take this in a bottle of Heinz ketchup is like seven ninety nine now. What? Yeah. Heinz ketchup, seven ninety nine, And then the lower tier you have like maybe it, it's, um, Welch's couches or something like that. Uh, it's like another ketchup brand, right? Yeah. It's like five bucks. Is that the Canadian brand? The, uh, yeah. Uh, Hunts? I don't know what I... What's a, no, not Heinz. There's like another one. Uh, I think it's Hunts or something like that. Anyway. Exactly, right? And then you have like the President's Choice ones, which is like three forty nine, right? But typically back in the day, man, even for like the little squeeze bottles, like two forty nine for a ketchup, yeah. right? But seven ninety nine for condiment, right? Then you take like a full rack of chicken with like the 10 drumsticks. That's like 19, 20 bucks now. That used to be $8, Eight. $9. Salmon. This is how I know. And it's farm salmon. It, it, yeah, farm salmon. Ugh. This is how I know Galen Weston <laughs> is a crook, man. 25 bucks for a little piece of salmon, bro. I, I mean, it's it's ridiculous what's going on here. Like, they everything has shifted. It's so hard to live in Canada now. And I also want to get into the new policy changes with the, oh, with, with the, the capital gains increase. Capital gains. I want to get your insights into it. But before moving on to that, right? You really want to get me hot, eh? Hey man, let's, this is the DC talks, right? So so talk. <laughs> yeah, no. Well, just and your point too. Like even going to Costco, it used to be Costco yeah. used to be like you know you could save some it's money. Cheaper, yeah. And I think Natalie and I used to spend like we get like a cart. It'd be like four. Every time we go, it was about four hundred fifty dollars for a whole family. Right? For a family, yeah. yeah. And we we go there. We we do like we replenish all the things in our in our uh, in our in our, in our pantry, right? Mm-hmm. And some things like oh, goods and stuff too, but. The last few times, there's been nothing under eight hundred dollars, and we're like, "What the hell do we spend?" At one point, we went in; it was eleven hundred dollars, and I'm like, "Eleven? What did I spend eleven hundred dollars?" Yeah, on? yeah. But at Costco, and I'm like, "Oh, so we're kind of re- like so." After we did that purchase, we're like, "Now we're very cautious of what we're mm-hmm. buying," mm-hmm. and we we thought we were then too, but it was just like our usual items, and then it, it went up so fast. Mm-hmm. What I have a problem with is like, there are these people in there and. You know, like, again, we make good money, so it's like, you know, for us, it hurts, but it's not to the point that we're struggling to make ends meet. I was listening to uh, somebody read a, a Twitter post, mm-hmm. and this was a mother. I think she had a nine-year-old daughter, and she's talking about how she's struggling. She goes, I won't tell my daughter that. I'm like, yeah, I'm not eating because I can't afford to feed both of us. And she goes, the only reason why I haven't put a bullet in my head is that because of her daughter. And that's the only reason why she said, because I don't want to birth through this torture. People are almost opting to kill themselves that's to, live, that's in, to live in Canada. What happened to Canada? This what happened? Canada I moved and, to. And it's not even, it, it's not even affordability. Mm-hmm. Then I'm like, I don't know if you take Ubers or not. And I still talk to like immigrants oh, that come God. in, they drive Ubers. And I love them. But thank God that we have them here to do that. And some of them are like in the schools. And, they're, and you talk to some of the students or some of the cab mm-hmm. drivers stuff too. And I'm like, and they're visually upset to come mm-hmm. into Canada. Mm-hmm. They're like, we were, we were sold wrong goods. Yeah, they told us how good Canada was. We got here, like it was nothing that they told us about, nothing at all. And now the budget just came out, mm-hmm. and all of us Canadians are in here too. I'm like, do you not people see not what's going on with Canada? Do you not see that Trudeau is now trying to burn Canada down before he leaves office? He's intentionally fucking us. He knows he's leaving. He knows, he knows he's-, he's like like that piece of fucking shit. I don't give a shit. That piece of shit is ruining our good country. And if I get banned for this, I don't give a shit. Justin Trudeau is a piece of shit. Mm-hmm. And if for all, I, I can't stand my f- liberal friends would say they, they think they're not in the 1%. I'm like, do you make money? You're in the 1%. He's screwing you. Mm-hmm. They think they're middle class. There is no more middle class. There's none. Unless you're on welfare, welfare people are middle class now. Like, do you see what he's done to our country? He didn't know how to balance a checkbook. Stephen Harper warned us about this before he was out of office that Justin Trudeau doesn't know what he's doing with a with a budget. Man, I miss and now Stephen he gets Harper. Policies. Man. So, like, before he comes out with this budget, and one of the things that we're talking about, my financial planner, you know, Jason, mm-hmm. Jason Pereira. You've been on the show. You love Jason. Oh man. He called me yesterday. I was working. I was doing, I was doing pictures and videos. So I didn't even get a chance to open up, uh, to, to look anything into the budget. He was furious. Now, to get Jason mad is very hard to do. Mm-hmm. Well, certain things, because he's very logical. And he just started, me and Julia were in the car from our video, and he started swearing. And I'm like, he's going what's on. going on? He's going he goes, on. you didn't want to look at the budget? I'm like, dude, no, I didn't have a chance. He's like, Justin Trudeau just increased 80% of capital gains. I'm like, what? 
So I'm like, wait, wait, what do you mean? He goes, for the first $250,000, you're still going to get you know, charged at the, what are the 52% or mm -hmm. 50%. He goes, but after that, it's going to be 80%. So effectively, after your first $250,000 you make on capital gains, mm -hmm. You're going to be taxed at forty percent of your gains. Mm -hmm. So let's 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 do an example, right? Yeah. So let's say I made a million dollars. Yeah. In... Well, I give an example. I said, okay. okay, so I had a rental property. Your I said, duplex. So, so I said, yeah. So my my six bucks. I six said, bucks. so yeah. say I made if I sold it to and I make after the expenses, I'm at two million dollars. How much money would I would spend in capital gains? He's like, well, if you made two million dollars over here, let's be like in the current rules. Okay, and these rules come effect as of June first. So. If the closing happens in May 31st, your capital gains on the $2 million would be $500,000, roughly mm -hmm. around $500,000, which means you get to keep about 1.5. Mm -hmm. He goes, after that, he goes, if it's after, it's after June 1st, now your capital gains, you got to add another 350000 around there mm -hmm. in there. So now you're taking less than 1.1. So almost half of all of your gains. And why do they want to, why do, why do they want to do this now, in your opinion? Why, why are they doing this now? Because yeah. he doesn't give a shit. Mm -hmm. Because he's on his way out, and he needs to put some money into like he needs to put money into the government because he keeps spending freely to all mm -hmm. these other countries. And, and again, why he's spending money in the countries we don't see it. Like guys, it's actual. We've been doing that a lot. So it's it's foreign aid. There's things that happen back and forth. So there are certain countries which we should be giving money back and forth. Fine. There's all that stuff too, but. He's not just spending money on that, even in the country. Like, look at the Arrive Can app. He spent $65 million on an app. He spent some, like, uh, that, that, uh, the gambling uh, app, which was going bankrupt, in which he spent another 30 or something million dollars. He's spending our money because he doesn't, because for him, it's like he doesn't even know the concept of money. Mm -hmm. And I think now he's doing it because just to give us a little F you. Yeah. You know, he's yeah. screwing us because the next person that comes in, it's going to take decades. To get this back. To get this back. So even if Pierre so Polyev... Pierre Polyev is screwed. Mm -hmm. If Pierre Polyev wins the next election, and I'll tell you this, if Pierre Polyev wins the next election, he won't last more than a term because the Canadians will start blaming him that he didn't balance the checkbook mm -hmm. because Justin Trudeau has left the country desolate mm -hmm. after this. Mm -hmm. He is screwing us so hard. There has to be a way to get him out. There has to be before he, like, he burns the whole country to the ground. I don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. Like I feel violated. I feel helpless. You know, like I post all this stuff too, like fingers to Justin, like, but we can't even do anything. Can't do nothing. We couldn't do anything. Yeah. The little guy's mess. He's, he's screwed over. And even think about the businesses now. Like what's the incentive of starting a business when you know that you're being taxed at the wazoo? Oh. Right. There's no incentives. Did for you know tax used to be illegal, by the way? There's a, there's a thing I heard like where they yeah. say you don't, you don't even have to pay tax. Yeah. Oh, try. Good try. Good try that. Yeah. I, I'm not, I'm not saying that. the States, I've said that before so, too. Yeah. Like, I mean, I, but so just to let you know, like, if you guys do your research, tax was supposed to be illegal. Mm -hmm. And the tax would come in, I don't know if it was just in the US or Canada, but it was just supposed to be a short period of time during the war so they can recoup some money. And then the government got more money and more money and more money. And then the next thing you know, we're taxed on everything. So just do some research on that too. I've, it's been years since I've done that because I'm like, there's no way I'm not paying taxes. Mm -hmm. I didn't, it was just, it was an exercise of futility because there was nothing I could do about it to get, there's no way that the governments are not going to stop taxing us. But yeah, like it, it was, we were never, we were never supposed to be taxed. We were never like years and years and years ago past that like, there wasn't tax like this. Mm -hmm. So in your opinion, you think he has like a personal vendetta just to like. Oh yeah. I think he's trying to bring Canadians. the country to the ground now. Yeah. And he, I, know, he knows that people hate him now. Mm -hmm. He knows people in his own party hate him. He's not the beloved Canadian. You know, like everyone saw Trudeau as like this young, handsome, just like. Yeah, comes from like a hey, lineage. Listen, I voted for him for the first term yeah. too because I think Stephen Harper. I've said this before, and I'll admit it. I'm part of the problem. I got him in the first office. But I, I never voted him. for him after that. I, I said, "Oh my God, what did I do? Can we go back? Can we?" I, so I after the first Stephen after Harper. the first term, I said, "No, this is this is not happening," mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it was too late. We couldn't get him out. Mm -hmm. And then Jagmeet Singh fucking joins him, and then now he the, the two of them. Oh my God! Like I know that. Jags Mead is doing it because without Justin Trudeau, like he would not have a job. Mm -hmm. So I understand it's survival of the fittest, but dude, come on, have some balls. Put your foot down on some things. Like, yeah. you, like you're not helping the country right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, part of the thing too, my theory is that this whole uh, WEF plan that they have coming up, you know, the whole thing with the whole one world government. And if you look at the way things are going, the... The, Sorry, the, I'm laughing at that because people they, they people think you're 
you're crazy when I used to talk to people with the one world government, you know? So just, yeah. to, like, just to let you know, just so, so anyway, go on. So think about it like this, right? 15 minutes. Why is, one world <laughs> why is he doing this? All the jobs are going to the public sector. You're not incentivizing entrepreneurship or innovation or anything like that. You're taking away funding from the entrepreneur. You're putting more public sector jobs, right? So now you're relying on the government to, to did feed. You, yeah. Did you know we had more people leave the country last year than came in? I did not know that. Or at least close to. If it was it was either equivalent or or more. I thought it was less. I, I was talking to Ariana's mm -hmm. dad about it. He, yeah. I, I thought it was 450,000 people left and 470 came in. But it was roughly around the to same. America, like Texas, um, they left. Florida. Yeah, they left. To the US, they left. They left. They left. And we left. We lost good Canadians. Mm -hmm. Canadians that were working in here. Canadians that were adding to the economy. Building multi-million dollar businesses, yeah. right? And and those are jobs that are leaving the economy, right? So think about with this new uh, policy, all the businesses that are going to leave or even shut down. The little guy who wants to start that business that could make five, ten million dollars in revenue, that's like employing two, three hundred people. Mm -hmm. So think about that everywhere now. So people are not going to Texas and Florida. But back to my point, my theory is that this this is all happening. So we could remove that enterprising spirit that the West has. And they're trying to make us more subservient to the government, yeah. right? So now the more you work, the more it's going to feed towards like the whole socialism way of doing things. So even if you make money, there's going to be a point where you're like, what's the point of this, mm -hmm. right? And the older you get, the more like, ah, I'm just losing energy. I don't have the capacity. Ah, let me just take this uh, universal basic income. You know, that's coming up too. Right. So there's more incentive for them to keep feeding you and the spirit of like actually creating and actually giving to the economy is gone. Even startups now, there's, you can't even no get funding reason. anymore. There's there's so many people that are just like, why do I do this? Yeah. They, they why? Can't even make, why? You yeah. know, there, well, I think COVID how, had a huge impact on a lot of the small businesses. And I, I keep saying to this day, that was their goal to remove a lot of the small businesses. I know it sounds nasty, but I think it was true. And Every time they increase interest, and in, uh, part of including to that, sorry, adding on to that, did you know every time they increase minimum wage, small business goes out of business. Mm -hmm. Big stores love it, right? If I'm Walmart, oh, you want to increase minimum wage? Great. I'm going to talk to my suppliers. I'm going to get them to go down. I'm just going to increase the prices. So it's fine. I'm like, hey, listen, and I'll just say, well, minimum wage has gone up. So has everything else gone up. The small businesses across the street can't keep up with that. Yeah. They yeah. just can't. And, and, about, then, and they go, so every time, so you think minimum wage is actually helping people? Like, like DC, like even look at us, right? I, I, at Waverly, we can't afford to really employ a Canadian, right? We have to use contractors. Sad. We have to go offshore. We have to do everything where it's a lot cheaper just to sustain operations. Like I hired someone uh, last year for like seven months. Like she was working for us part-time. It became very costly, right? Because when, you know, you, when the cost of getting business doesn't really equate to the sustaining of the business, you're feeling squeezed, right? So when she's like, you know what? I think it's best if I quit. I'm like, that's actually a part. And I, and I hate it. <laughs> And I and I and it makes me feel like a crook because I'm like, yeah, thank you for leaving. And I I'm like, this was a, I loved giving like kind of like you, right? Kind of embodying that spirit. You want to give people opportunity. Right. So imagine now with more um increase in, in minimum wage. What about those kids coming out of school? Those kids who need work experience and like to get a job at Timmy's, yeah. Harvey's, retail stores. You're gonna have people staying in those jobs longer than they should. So I'll give you another one too. Uh People talk about Italy, but I had cousins before COVID and stuff too that had to work on cruise ships mm -hmm. for free mm -hmm. so they can eat mm -hmm. because the cruise ships would feed them. Are we going there? So basically, they made nothing. They were on cruise ships for a year just so they can eat. You see, we'll be, we we'll eat the bugs pretty soon, man. Yeah. We're going there, man. We're going there. We're going there. Yeah. They're going to tell, listen, it's the world is scary. Like it, the things, the numbers are in front of us. We started off talking about, Interest rates. Interest rates. But it all comes together. It all comes together. Yeah. It all comes together. So the numbers on this side would make sense to cut interest rates, but think about that. That also helps you live. Mm -hmm. So then there's a conspiracy that comes in too. And again, we can't even call it conspiracy. It's facts. It's, it's facts. It's written down. It's he, in the they're world just trying to screw us everyone. And I and like why they keep going after people that 
Like exactly, that have an entrepreneurial spirit, the ones that are making money, instead of giving us a break, if you gave us a break, mm -hmm. the people are making all the money, say, because let's be honest, the elites aren't paying taxes. The, the, so when they're talking about you know, who they're taxing, they're taxing the regular person. Mm -hmm. We're not even talking about somebody who makes $100 million. We're talking about somebody who has, if they just want to sell their cottage. So like, for example, my in-laws that, you know, they're, my uh, Natalie's grandmother passed away. If they wanted to sell their cottage, even though they never owned because they can't afford it, they're going to be taxed. They're not going to make they're any money. They're going to make no money. Even though it's that. been the family for 40, 50 years. And, and, that, and they won't, they're getting taxed for what? And, and again, they're, they're not affluent. We're not talking, we're not talking about affluent people here. We're talking about everybody else who had an insight like, okay, maybe I'll just buy a rental property to help with my income. And they're, they, have, they have a job. Like when I was a treasury analyst, I had a, I had a rental property. So I was doing that. It was so great. But what happens if it's cash flow is not to go to sell that because I want to cash out. Well, now I'm getting hit because I spent, I took the risk of spending all my money to, to purchase an investment property, which is not working out. Now I'm getting hit because you can't afford to, you don't know how to balance a budget and you're screwing me over. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't make any sense to me. Mm -hmm. So again, entrepreneurial spirit's getting broken. People are just getting pissed off. Why aren't we going after the top zero zero point one percent or like two? Like, if you really cared about the economy, why aren't you going after businesses like this? Why, like, it, it because it makes no sense because they can't go after them. They have all their legal people and all like like look at like like a like a Donald Trump or like a Bill Gates. So like those guys aren't paying taxes. Mm -hmm. Taxes, come on. And do you feel like they're doing under the table deals with like you know uh, I know Galen. Uh, let's say Loblaws, because there's a reason that TikTok really resonated with people because Galen owns uh, No Frills, Loblaws, uh, Sobeys, I think Sobeys so. right? So food, the cost of food now is, it's, it's, you can't afford it, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So the grocery bills are going up. Yeah. Gas is going up. But they're smart. So what Galen says is like, well, we didn't earn that much profit. Everything else went up, so we went up as well. Mm -hmm. So they, so you look at the argument on their side too. And it's like, well, we're, we're, our margins still stay the same. That's what I was saying before about the minimum wage. Mm -hmm. So what do you expect them? He goes, what do you expect this to do? Not make a that's, profit. That's facts. That's facts. That's facts. So yeah. like it relates back to the mm -hmm. minimum wage stuff. Yeah. And he's like, so this is again, he's still crushing the, the little guys mm -hmm. because of this. It all leads into the same idea. Yeah. So you can blame Galen West all you want, but he's a product just doing what all the other elites are doing. And it's mm -hmm. like, and we're the ones, we're the byproduct ones that can't, they can't sustain to live. Yeah. Um, it's 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 so messed up. Like I don't. The, the future looks bleak right now for people like Isaac and I. You know, getting started. I feel bad for my kids. Yeah. Even for your kids too. They're 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 coming yeah. up. Yeah, right. Man. They're eleven and thirteen. Yeah. People ask like, so Dave. How are you going to get your kids to to be able to afford a house? Like I started buying them condos now. You're protecting I, them. I, but again, I, am I going to hold on? I was the idea was well, when the condo. So right now we have we have a number of them. If one of them start to to not earn money, we would sell them one and buy something new, and then maybe that's when they move in. That would be the equity. Well, now based on these new numbers, if I'm earning money, I might not have a down payment as much as I could to put on a condo for my kids. They might have to live in an older one. Like again, poor me. I'm just saying. But that was the idea, mm -hmm. you know. At a 50, percent you know, tax bracket or 52 percent tax bracket, of capital gains. We had wrapped our heads around that for a number of times, and it was just it made sense. We we're like, we get, we have to pay taxes because we're good Canadian citizens. But now it's at a point. Now you're just gouging. Mm -hmm. Now you're just gouging. Now you got stupid carbon tax on top of that. I fucking can't stand. I've said this over and over again. Like, okay. We're increasing the carbon tax, but you get more money in your pocket. How about no? How about you don't give us the rebate? How about you don't do that? How about you just like say, okay, like there is no carbon tax. If we're getting the if we're getting more money in our pocket, well then just give us the money. Why are you taxing this? I I don't understand the practice. You know, it's supposed to get more money in your pocket. That's supposed to be mm -hmm. the idea. Or we're taxing people like it's all bullshit because there is underhand deals. I know there's stuff going underneath the scenes that people are, it was like those, those, those uh, smog credits and stuff too, where other companies were buying it. Don't tell me everything's in the up and up. I don't trust anything that Justin Trudeau says. As soon as he starts talking, I say my vagina dries up. That's, that's what I feel. Like every time that guy opens his mouth, I can't, st I'm sorry. I, I can't just, look at me. I can't stand to look. Natalie gets mad at me. I'm like, oh. I'm like, what? I'm like, I fucking saw his face. I can't even see his face. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry for my liberal friends. I have liberal friends who are starting to push them. I'm like, I don't care. Look, you got to take your liberal hat off. 
and just look at the policies he's putting through. I don't, why do you have to be on some sort of the spectrum? Why can't you be a Canadian? Why can't you look and just say, hey, what he's doing is not right. Why, why do you have to follow a political party? Why do you have to say, whatever he says is good by me? No, let's get our country back. Let's just get this guy out and then we can figure out after like maybe get Paul Evan, who cares? But for the next four months, okay, let's just try to reset. Mm -hmm. And then maybe now he can follow your political party. But at this point, even he knows he's done wrong and nobody wants him out. Mm -hmm. So let's get him out. I think we need to end there because Isaac's telling us to wrap it up. Yeah. But I'm just, I'm getting so sick of this. You're sick I am your so stomach, sick eh? of this bullshit. Yeah. You know, I'm sick of the kumbaya culture. Like this whole liberal conservatives. You know, I feel like there's a divide happening, like where let's just do everything for everybody. And then there's the pragmatic people like you and I. We're like, no, it's dollars and cents. It's truth or false. Let's live by that. Yeah. And I'm just, I'm 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 losing it too because I just told you before I was a card carrier PC and I voted liberal one time because I didn't like the the direction Stephen Harper was in it yeah. was going because I thought he was mailing it in I was smart enough, and I'm I'm a conservative mm -hmm. and I voted liberal mm -hmm. that's what you do to make change sometimes mm -hmm. sometimes you have to go through change and go against like what your party pool says it's yeah. I, why do you have I, anyway i'm just let's go away. everybody hey that's dc talks episode 69 man we can go on yeah ah dc man um quick what can canadians do to move forward from this i would start talking to your your council members I would start like, voicing opinions. I would start talking to anybody you possibly can, your MPs, and say like you're disgusted of what's happening mm -hmm. in the culture. I, if you if you have anybody who's NDP in the country, or start start getting in Jack Meads Singh's ear and just say, listen, we need a new election because I don't think that we, he can't pass any bills mm -hmm. if the NDP doesn't fall along with them. Start getting into your counselors and your representatives' ears. I don't think we need to have a revolt or anything like that. It doesn't have to be violent. I just think we need to be more proactive and just voice our opinions of our disgust. Mm -hmm. Everybody does DC Talks episode 69. Um, yeah. We'll definitely have more conversations in the in the <laughs> chats. It's such a deflating, it's so deflating know, to think about, I know, man. I know. The yeah. problem is it's like I know we need to end this one, but the problem is I we just sometimes we feel defeated because it, it feels like we can't do anything. And can't do nothing. At least in a country like in the U.S. where they have checks and balances, so you can try to pass a bill that people don't get ousted. In. Like here, the bills get passed because it's like a dictatorship because mm -hmm. they're too scared to lose their jobs, and that's bullshit. Yeah, vote of non-confidence, and like, oh, oh my god, I have to go for writing. I might lose my seat, so I might as well just go with whatever the the Liberal Party says. That's bullshit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Anyways, everybody, DC Talks episode sixty nine. We'll see you next week with uh, Varun uh, for episode seventy, and. Uh, Wish you all have a great week ahead, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Hopefully we didn't give you a downer. <laughs> <laughs> Peace.